Well, many animals sent to shelters face an uncertain future. We all know that. It's horrible. Countless dogs and cats are either uh, put down for health reasons or lack of space. In Hillsborough County, officials say they have been working to reduce the euthanasia rate at shelters, at shelters for several years now. But some say it's still too high. In our studio this morning is Nathan Winograd. He is in Tampa today for uh, a conference focusing on how pet euthanasia can not only be reduced but actually eliminated. So good morning to you and thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Well, so you see, it's not an impossible task. Many cities have actually switched to no-kill policies. Um, what? It's not impossible. This can be done? Well, it's being done all over the country. In fact, it's become a worldwide movement. We now have no-kill communities uh, in, in states across the country. We have no-kill communities in California, in Virginia, in Utah, in Kansas, all over. And what is really exciting is that some of these communities are urban and some are rural, some are in the north, some are in the south, some are in uh, politically conservative areas, some are in politically liberal areas, which shows that despite all those things that normally separate us as Americans when it comes to saving the lives of dogs and cats. People of all walks of life want to build a better world for them and in communities across the country that's exactly what we have. So we obviously have a problem here locally as many areas do. What can be done locally to achieve that goal? Well, what I'm bringing today to this this conference we're having is uh, a, a we're bringing uh, the message of how these other communities, who at one time were as killing as many dogs and cats as Hillsborough County is doing now, and what steps they took to end the killing. Because despite the fact that these communities are, that have achieved no kill are very diverse, the model that they achieve, they, they use to end the killing is the same, and that's the model we're bringing uh, to this community. And, you know, some say euthanasia just simply helps with pet overpopulation, but you have said that this is actually a myth. Well, we, we have assumed for a long time that there must be too many animals and not enough homes because we have been killing so many of them. But when we actually looked at the issue, there are about 4 million dogs and cats being killed in shelters across the country. But every year, about 23.5 million Americans bring a new dog or cat into their home. So we don't have a pet overpopulation problem. Hmm. We have a market share problem. And when shelters compete for the market share of animals, animals live instead of die. Very interesting. And now what, tell me, what is the issue with, with tax dollars? Well, the good news is that the programs to save lives are actually um, as cost-effective or more cost-effective than killing. For example, when a shelter takes in, holds an animal, and then kills an animal, that's revenue negative. That costs money. Okay. Adoptions bring in revenue. When they partner with nonprofit rescue organizations and create these public-private partnerships, the animals not only get to live, but the costs of care get transferred from tax dollars to private philanthropy. So it's a win for the animals, and it's a win for the taxpayers. And so many people care so deeply about, you know, our four-legged friends. What can people do if they really want things to change here? Well, what they can do is exercise their democratic rights. I mean, these shelters uh, are, are kill using our tax dollars. Uh, they kill in our name, uh, but they don't necessarily reflect our values. You're absolutely correct that uh, people care so deeply about dogs and cats. You know, we spend $50 billion a year to take care of our pets, and we give <laughs> hundreds of millions more uh, to animal-related charities right now. Giving to animal-related causes is the fastest-growing segment in American philanthropy today. We are crazy about our dogs and cats. And I know in Florida you had some partisan fireworks over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. This is the only true bipartisan issue in America, despite yeah. those differences in politics, in our economic views, in our, you know, in our education levels. Yeah. We want to save dogs and cats, and I have great faith that the people of this community will do just that. It's true. You're right about that, especially here in Florida. We, we love dogs and cats here, but tell us about Save 90. Well, that is the name of the campaign, basically, right? Correct. What, what we see is that, I mean, there's always going to be some animals who are hopelessly ill or injured or irremediably suffering. And what we want is for shelters to use the same standards that you or I might use for our own animal. At the end of their life, when they're hopelessly ill, we want to bring euthanasia back to its dictionary definition. And what we found is that roughly 90% of all animals are savable. They're not suffering. They're healthy. They're 
they're friendly, and they would make great, great pets. The problem is that people think that if they're in shelters, there must be something wrong with them, that they're damaged goods. And in fact, that's not the case. Most of the time, there was something wrong with the person the animal was attached mm -hmm. to, yep. but the animal would make a great pet. Yeah, thank you so much for being oh, with us this morning, My Nathan. pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's really such a great mission. So thank you. save 90, remember that. All right, thank you.